Now at 6 o'clock, a suspect is in custody after a shooting in southwest Portland that happened right behind a school. We have a live report coming up on the investigation. And have you seen these incredible photos of food on Instagram lately? Well, they're part of a new phenomenon called AI slop. Coming up, we'll tell you what exactly that is and why these fake accounts are gaining in popularity. I don't think I want to know about the slop. <laughs> uh, let me tell you about the jugglers. Yes, jugglers live in studio this morning. Look at them go. We're talking about the Portland Juggling Festival. It's been around for more than 30 years and it's back at Reed College in Southeast Portland this weekend. All the details on that with live juggling where there is never a mistake made. Look at them keeping those objects in the air. War with the Jugglers coming up here in just a moment. The juggling has stopped <laughs> for just a moment. We'll have that segment for you here at 6.15. Lots to cover, as a matter of fact, on this Friday morning, but we lead off this hour with that guy. They don't even drop stuff when they stop, which to me, that would be the most difficult thing. That's how I would if stop. I'm stop it, everything's on the floor. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Here's a look at your Friday forecast. Happy Friday to you. We have a channel of rain. It's going that way, right up into Seattle. We're in the tail end of this. Likely some rain in Astoria and Long Beach and probably even Kelso Longview today. Portland may or may not see some traces of rain with our cloudiness during the day today. 47, all dry right now. That rain chance sitting currently out to sea. We'll be 54 noon. I probably should have put a raindrop there. There's a chance of a shower or a sprinkle at noon. Uh, chances maybe uh, extend into this evening. I have us getting up to about 60 degrees. So it's a case of maybe we get it. Maybe we don't. Chris, back to you. Looks good, Rod. All right, good on a Friday so far. I've got one trouble spot I want to get you out and aware of here. This is out in East County Gresham area. Uh, getting word of a possible rollover crash on Southeast Oxbow Parkway near St. Francis. A number of emergency crews working the scene there. Back to the freeway drive. Here's I-5 through North Portland. The headlights there. That's the southbound commute coming off the Interstate Bridge. This is up near Jansen Beach, and we are rolling right along just fine there as we are up near Victory Boulevard, and the sunset looks good as well. Guys, so far, our freeway drive is in pretty good shape this morning. All right, Chris, we're going to start this hour with an update on a crash that happened late last night in the Park Rose neighborhood of Northeast Portland. That crash has caused some power outages in that neighborhood, so we're looking at the map right here from Pacific Power. About 1,900 customers without power at this moment, and we don't know, no word yet from Pacific Power on when the power will come back. The crash happened again just after 11 o'clock last night on Northeast 102nd and Prescott. A car took out a utility pole. That's what caused the outage. We don't know if anyone was hurt in that car. We did reach out to Portland Police for more information and are waiting to hear back. One man is in custody after a shooting near the Islamic School of Portland. He has now been charged with attempted murder. Ashley Grams is covering this story for us live in southwest Portland this morning. Ashley, what can you tell us? Drew China, good morning. We're at the Shell gas station here off Southwest Capitol Highway. This is where Portland police say they found that victim, a man who was injured. He was then transported to the hospital. Police say it's unclear. The extent of his injuries at this time are unclear, but the shooting didn't actually happen here. It happened next door. I want to give you a look here at the Islamic School of Portland. It actually happened in a parking lot behind this school. Police say the suspect went into the school, which was in session at the time, but then officers say the suspect walked out of the school without incident incident and was taken into custody. Here's Mike Benner with Portland Police. The suspect and the victim are connected to the school and the mosque and each other and have a history with each other. In other words, this is a very isolated incident. Portland police have identified that suspect as 42 year old Noradine Dibb of Beaverton. He's now being housed at the Multnomah County Detention Center. He's facing several charges, including attempted murder and assault. China, Drew. All right, Ashley Grams reporting live for us in Southwest Portland. Meanwhile, we're getting a first look at body cam video from the night that Portland police shot and killed a man in the Brentwood Darlington neighborhood. We do have a warning here. While we don't see the man getting shot, we will hear the gunshot. The video shows 28 year old Nicholas Thorne on a balcony of an apartment building. This is on Southeast Lambert back on October 4th. He was yelling and making threats that night. He had what appeared to be a rifle. Police say Thorne shot in the air at one point and told them it was a pellet gun. The video shows negotiators talking with him for a half hour before one officer fired one shot. 
I really want to hear what you're saying, and I don't want your neighbors to hear all of your business. I just want to give you privacy. Oh. It's not clear what Thorne did just before that shot was fired. We know he died at the scene that night, and the officer involved is now on administrative leave. The Lynn County Fire Defense Board announced that Saturday is the start of burn season. The Defense Board represents multiple fire department agencies, including Lebanon, Albany, and Sweet Home. The board says to call the Lynn County burn line before you start burning. That number is 541-451-1904. And the Oregon State Fire Marshal sent teams to North Carolina yesterday to assist in Hurricane Helene recovery efforts. Local officials say at least 90 people are still missing, and there are many communities that people can't access still. The Fire Marshal Incident Management Team was on the ground in Florida in 2022 after Hurricane Ian and says that this latest appointment will run through the end of the month. And there's a new addition to Oregon's Rail Heritage Center in Southeast Portland. Yesterday, the museum announced that people can now get an up close look at the newest steam locomotive, the historic Mount Emily Shea number one after getting picked to be its permanent home back in 2022. So the Mount Emily Lumber Company bought the Shea in 1928, used it until 55 hmm. until the last couple of years. The Oregon Historical Society has cared for it. I'm coming back in the water. Getting close to the finish line. West Coast Giant Pumpkin Regatta. It is tomorrow here at the Lake of the Commons in Tualatin. We're drifting. Oh, there's a little bang up at the end. And Charity wins. A little out of breath there. Have you ever True? seen that before? No. A, pu a person paddling in a giant pumpkin like that? Honestly, I didn't even know we were showing this <laughs> video up until about a minute ago. So that was back in 2018 as we got ready for that year's giant pumpkin regatta in Tualatin. We're bringing that clip back because the event is back this weekend. It's happening in Tualatin. The main event is Sunday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pumpkin race heat starting at noon and 2 o'clock. Admission is free. There's also a lot of food at this event, entertainment, <laughs> even some pumpkin golf and pumpkin bowling. You can find more information at the City of Tualatin's website. I have fond memories of that event, Rod and Shine, and not just uh, previewing it in the early morning hours for all those yeah. years, but I got to MC it, hmm. I think like three years in a row. And one year, Rod, mm -hmm. that event was met with a heavy downpour, Ooh. which can happen this time of the year. Uh. Yeah. So my question now is, how does Sunday afternoon look? Uh, well, so part of our forecast messaging is Sunday morning's dry. The timing of when rain begins Sunday afternoon to me is still uncertain. Some modeling says we've got rain by one o'clock. Other modeling says we don't really have it until after four. There is a cold front eventually coming in, bringing a rain ban at some point. And to Drew's point, that rain ban could have a downpour with it. So that's Sunday afternoon. Keep your eyes on forecast adjustments for that. Right now we're all dry and we have a completely dry forecast through the nine o'clock hour. So getting you out the door and to work wherever you're going this morning, weather should not be a, a factor at all. We're 47. I mean, it's that time of the year where you should expect most mornings to be in the 40s, right? It's um, 40, in fact, in Forest Grove. Uh, let's see here. Sandy's at 41. Anybody in the 30s? We had a few 30s earlier and the fact that temperatures have bumped up shows you that the cloud deck is actually thickening somewhat. 41 now in Dallas, McMinnville, and Estacada. All right, this is what we're watching uh, for today. You've got rain moving into pretty much all of western Washington. Likely rain, I think, coming light stuff for Kelso Longview and then also in, in Oregon down along the north coast. Portland may or may not uh, get a touch of this light rain or sprinkles. Again, the main bullseye of it is well up to our north. So here's the forecast map for today. If you're in the gorge, there's a chance of some light rain or sprinkles in the west end, but partly sunny skies out toward the Dalles and then all sunny in central and eastern Oregon today. Most inland areas will spend them and the coast for that matter will spend much of the day in the 50s. Still chilly up on the mountain timberline holding in the 30s today. They have four inches of snow from yesterday on the ground. So we get up to 60 maybe tomorrow, partly sunny, a nice day overall 70. We talked about Sunday with the increasing rain chances in the afternoon. A lingering shower on Monday after that. Right now we go all dry on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and this is your seven day forecast.